And I'm just so thankful and so honored that my wife Katarina and I get to just be a part of this incredible team, this incredible church. And so I want to just say thank you to Pastor Rick and Michelle for their vision, for their heart, for people, their, their heart for us. They've been our pastors for so many years. And can we just give it up for Pastor Rick and Michelle? I love them. I love you, Pastor Rick. Even though you like LSU. Okay. Um, but listen, I, I got to do something before I even jump into this. I can't wait to get into this word. But first, I got to give you an update on my kids. Some of y'all are can't, can't wait for this. You always love this. Others of you, you're just like, oh, come on, more pictures of kids. Well, get over it. You've got to look at them. Okay, uh, so <laughs> this, this is my son. Oh, my. Look at this kid. He is just, man, this dude can pound some food. This is my son, Aliam. We call him Bubba because... He just sits there and he eats. Like if you sit down and you start eating before you give him food, he just starts, ah, ah. he like just starts making this noise. And I'm like, my Lord, I, I need a raise. Let's feed this kid. You know what I mean? So anyway, he, uh, he's amazing. He's my son. I love him. And uh, this is my daughter. Oh my goodness, guys. Whew. Okay. All right. This is her first dance recital. And I just want everybody in here to know I've got a Glock for a reason. Am I right, man? Back off, boys. You know what I'm saying? My NRA people, I, I'm kidding, I'm sorry, this is bad. Okay, anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is my daughter. Let's get back to the message. This is my daughter. I love her. She's amazing, and uh, she loves to dance, and I love her. And this is us on a little hiking trip we took. Uh, everybody loves it, but my son, he hated it. <laughs> Look at him, man. I had to show you this picture because he's just like, Dad, why are you doing this? Give me spaghetti. Um, so anyway, that's my family. Uh, I, I, love, I love my kids. I love my wife. We, we have an incredible time together. But uh, what I've been doing recently, and this is the God's honest truth, I've just been praying, like, God, please speak to my heart. Lord, I need you every day uh, to work in me, to move in me. That's been this prayer I've been asking for Jesus just to have access to my life. And I'm asking all of you today to really come in with a mindset of, please, God, speak to me this morning. Not just, okay, I hope we have a little fun, you know, we're going to go to lunch somewhere after church, but like, Lord, would you speak to my spirit, like deep within me, will you speak to me? And here's why. This is why I pray that prayer for me and why I'm asking you to pray that prayer right now is because that is the only way. If I give Jesus access to my life, that's the only way I'm going to be the dad that those kids need. That's the only way I'm going to be a husband to this woman on the front row that deserves the best husband in the world. That's the only way I'm going to be able to give that kind of love to her. You can give up for my boo. No, I mean, she's right here. She's beautiful. She's German. It's, it's the only way I'm going to be a complete leader. Do you understand? It's the only way we can do anything good is if we have Jesus in the middle of it all, if we allow him to be a part of our lives. So I'm asking all of us to, to lean in this morning, to go with me on this, but we're in a series, this new series called Remedy. Okay, so I'm gonna throw out a few definitions here on this word remedy. Remedy is a medicine or a treatment for a disease or injury. So it's a, it's a remedy, a treatment for an injury. Have any of you ever used the wrong remedy for an illness you had? Anybody ever done that? Got like the wrong type of medicine, took the wrong prescription? Well, one time I was sitting right there in this very church and I, I had something that I thought was tinnitus. My left ear, I was losing some hearing and there was some rumbling going on there. It was really frustrating. So I just, you know, self-diagnosed, you know, WebMD, <laughs> it'll hurt you. Anyway, so I, I chose to, to go and just like put these drops in my ears. What I've got, these drops were not helping. They were increasing the pressure inside of my ears. And one day as I'm sitting there, my ear made this high-pitched pop. And the second after it happened, I experienced vertigo for the first time in my life. If you've never had vertigo, let me just tell you, it's a trip. Okay, so the pastor was, it was a guest pastor, and he's preaching. He's up here, and he begins to spin in circles. Like, he's just, and I'm like, I didn't think I took my LSD this morning. You know what I mean? I, he's just, you know, he's just going around in circles, just spinning. And, and I'm sitting right next to Tommy Hunt, which is interesting that he's MC today, but I'm sitting right next to him, and I lean over, and I'm like, Tommy, when this guy gets done, the second he says, bow your heads, help me out of here. Tommy's like, what's going on, man? I'm like, not now, Tommy. And he was like, oh, gosh. You know, so he's just like sitting there. And I never wanted a pastor to wrap up his sermon more. I was like, why don't you just shut up and get to the altar call, mister? You know? Literally, after the sermon, pastors that are on this side like, came up to me the next day, and they were like, dude, did you hate that guy or something? Your face, you were so angry. I was like, no, I was about to die. And so when we use the wrong remedy for the illness we have, it can create more problems. 
Church, some of us, we've got, these, we've got these issues, we've got these illnesses, we've got these things going on in our life, and we're searching high and low for a remedy today. We're going to talk about the true remedy. Another remedy uh, definition for remedy is it's to set something right, to set a situation right. Anybody in here with me that you've said some things and done some things before, maybe made some mistakes and thought, there's no way this can be set right. I'm telling you right now, in my marriage, I've said some things that I've gone, oh my goodness, God, how am I going to set this right? I've, I've done some things, even in ministry, where I've gone, God, how am I going to set this right? I made a mistake. I'm here to tell you, we're talking about the one remedy, and his name is Jesus. There is a remedy to the things that we face, and his name is Jesus. And we're going to dive into this. These next three weeks, we're going to be looking at some incredible stories about our Savior and how he wants to be the remedy to every single thing that ails you, every single issue, every single problem. He can come in and make a difference. So we're going to be looking at some different miracles today, just two, that Jesus performed and how they, how they pertain to our life and what they can do in our world. So if you've got your Bible, you can turn to Mark chapter two. I'm not gonna read directly, I'm gonna kinda of paraphrase this story, but this is a miracle where Jesus does something so interesting, and it always just gets me thinking. But side note, every once in a while, I don't know about you guys, but when you know, Jesus does miracles, he does, he, he, he does them in strange ways sometimes. And I got to thinking recently, I was teaching a, our student ministry, and this one just popped in my mind, but I was like, Jesus does some weird things sometimes when he does miracles. And then I remembered, he goes, he said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And I wondered, does God ever, did he ever prank Jesus? You know what I mean? Think about it. <laughs> Jesus could have just said, you're healed, and they would have been healed. But instead, God's like, hey, Jesus, spit in that mud, rub it in his face. <laughs> Anybody else ever think that? Yeah, anyway, next time you're reading the Bible and you, and you read a miracle, just think about Jesus, you know, God up in heaven going like, hey, angel, check this out. You know what I mean? Like, I just think sometimes it might have happened. I don't know. But in this miracle, <laughs> that was for free. That has nothing to do with the message. But in Mark 2, there's this incredible miracle. There's so many points we can take out of this, but there's only one thing we're going to think about this morning. And there's these men. They have a friend who's paralyzed. And so they want to get their paralyzed friend to the remedy, to Jesus. They know that he can help them. So they put him on a mat. They're taking him there. They get to this home, and the home is packed out with people there to see Jesus. The home is spilling out. There's, not, there's a line at the door. There's no way they're going to get in there. So they say, man, we got to get, we gotta get this guy to Jesus. So many of you know the story. They get to the roof somehow. They break through the roof. They're lowering their friend down into Jesus. They're lowering him down. He gets in front of the Savior. He gets in front of the King of Kings, baby. He's right there. Jesus is interrupted in the middle of what he's doing. He stops. He looks at the man and says, your sins are forgiven. Now, if I'm a paralyzed man, that my friends just went through all that trouble, to get me in front of Jesus. And he said, your sins are forgiven. I'm gonna say, hey, Mr. So Spiritual. <laughs> I'm paralyzed, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can do this, bro, just heal me. You know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be so happy that he went for the sin issue in my life. I wanna be healed, man, right? But here's the thing, Jesus, he knows what's most important. Jesus wants to cut right down deeper than the surface level. He wants to go to the roots beneath our wreckage. He wants to dig in. And I recently, my wife and I were sitting in our, in our kitchen. We looked outside. We have these two big oak trees in our backyard. We were like, those are, those are pretty flowers up there in that oak tree. I was like, do flowers grow in oak trees? I don't think they do. And Kat was like, but they are pretty, you know. <laughs> She didn't even say that. I just wanted to use her voice. Anyway, but, uh, but we're looking at these flowers, and, and like, one, like one whatever year went by, and we didn't do anything about it, and all of a sudden, we're noticing that our tree is like kind of withering up. Some of the branches are dying. Well, it's this huge vine that had gone up into our tree, and so I go out there this spring, and I start to pull this thing up by the roots, and those roots were just tangled down into the roots of our tree. And then up into the tree, they were woven around and just sucking the life out of this tree. So I started to pull them down and to get them out. I'm telling you right now, Jesus wants to get before anything else. 
He wants to get to the roots beneath the wreckage in your life. Where are we seeing some stuff that is, what are we seeing some wreckage? Come on, what is causing the spiritual paralysis that you might face? What's causing brokenness, addiction, fear, repeated stakes, mistakes that we just make over and over and over? What's causing anger, annoyance, lust, depression, lack of direction? All of these things, we need to say, Jesus, today, I'm going to let you into the root of this. And I want to go back to the story. Here's this man. He's paralyzed. He's brought in front of the Lord. The Lord easily could have done a, a different miracle. He, he ended up healing the man. We know this. But he started with the root issue of sin. Today, I believe that many of us see wreckage in our life because there's a root of sin that's choking life out of us. There are things that we're choosing. There are mistakes that we're making. And the Lord is saying, I want to come in here and I want to help you uproot this thing and get it out of your life. I am the remedy. I do want to make a disclaimer, however. If you have a sickness, a physical sickness in here or an illness, I want to be very careful. I am not saying that you have that because of a root issue of sin. Please hear me. I'm using this paralleled story to teach you this simple fact. Jesus cares about your heart before he cares about anything else. And he wants to get in there and help you. I promise you that. So at the very beginning, I said, come on, let's lean in. Let's listen. Think about this scripture as you think about that. This is David in Psalm 139. Investigate my life, O God. Find out everything about me. Cross-examine me. Test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether I've done anything wrong. Then guide me on the road to eternal life. Does that sound like a guy that's saying, Lord, I want to give you access to every part of me? That's what that is. Today, I want to quickly pray that all of us would say, God, I want to give you access to the deepest parts of my life, to the roots of who I am. See if there's anything in me, if there's any sin issue, if there's any, if there's any separation issue. Come on, God, I want you to have access. Let's pray. God, we welcome you, myself included, because I have things that I need you to have access to consistently so you can help me. So all of us in this place, God, investigate our life, search us, and today we are willing to be hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. So if we're talking about a possible root issue of sin, the first question we have to ask ourselves is, are we all sinners? Before we answer that question, God answered the question for us, so we can just go here in Romans 3.23 and see, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So we've all, we, we're all sinners. Now listen, sometimes we overcomplicate that word sin. We think, okay, well, sin, it's a, it's a heroin addiction, or it's pornography, or, or it's adultery. No, listen, those are sins. But sin is anything outside of God's will and his plan for you that diverts you away from God. That's what sin is. It's simple. So where are my, my politic fans on Facebook at? You know what I'm saying? When you just get super angry and you're typing so hard, you're breaking keys. You know what I mean? Like, that's some sin, people, okay? Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to call you out because, you know, I got an anger bug too. It's called road rage, all right? I'm, I'm, where are my road ragers at? You know where you're at. Let's go here real quick. If you live in Maumel and you're taking a left onto Odom right there by Kroger, there's a light, okay? And I'm just letting all you know. Some of y'all, you eke out there a little bit when that light is yellow, and then it turns freaking green, and uh, you don't go left. You just sit there and wait. It's green. Go. You know what I mean? I'm like, I, I promise you, some of you, you better be glad you got an NLC sticker on the back of your car, because I, I, I'm ready to honk, and it's not just the friendly honk honk. It's like, man, I'm, I'm, I get, like, I got to get home, people. You know what I mean? So anyway, whoop, root issue. You know what I mean? I got to get, help me out. Ain't supposed to be flowers in an oak tree, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Listen, we've got these root issues that can take hold. Jealousy, manipulation, comparison. I, I don't want to go through all of them. I'm just saying we have things that are outside of God's will for us that we get into. So this next scripture, if we can agree that we're all sinners and we all, we all make mistakes, this next scripture should make all of us sit up straight a little bit. Okay? Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. Woo, and I'm a sinner. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
The wages of sin is death. This is important. There, there are two. Sin here and the death it causes, there's two different types of sin it's talking about. First, it's our sin nature. We're all born with it. And that is taken care of by salvation. We are justified before God when we say to the Lord, Jesus, you're my Savior. That covers our sin nature. We're, we're, we're forgiven in that moment. We're, we're one with the Lord. It's, and so people ask, well, well, how can a Christian, how can a real Christian's life still be a real mess? How's that possible if they've been forgiven? If they're, because this sin leads to death. Yes, it's talking about our need for justification and salvation, but it's also talking about something called sanctification. It's talking about this word that the Lord said he wanted us to understand that we will make choices and we will make mistakes that are outside of God's will and it's gonna be a lifetime of him unraveling that and uprooting things out of us as we continue to go back to him. Check out what the, the, the definition of sanctification is. To set something apart for the use intended by the designer. God is saying to you, my friends, I am your designer. I have something for you that's great, but there are root issues. There are things that are inside of you that I want to uproot, that I want to sanctify you and set you apart for the things that I have for you. But the choices you're making, the things that you're doing, they're only going to lead to death. They're only going to lead to pain. They're only going to lead to destruction. Now, before you get concerned and think, I wandered into a fire and brimstone church this weekend. <laughs> Before you get nervous, I'm gonna tell you every bit of this is encouragement. And here's why. Because I used to read that scripture. The wages of sin is death. You know, I'd read it negatively. But now I read it differently. And the biggest paradigm shift came for me when I had kids. And, and it was like, my, my kids, I don't know about your kids, but there's something about an electrical outlet on a wall. <laughs> How is it so interesting? It's just this thing on the wall. But it's like they're drawn to it like moths to the flame. They just, and what I find is that it's not, it's like they learn at some point, like I can't really get my pointer finger in there, so let me try to get my pinky fingers in there. You know, I'm like, how do you even have that dexterity? You know, you can't even, and I'm like, what is happening? And so my daughter, who was a little bit more startled by me when I would say no to her, one time I walked in a room and she was like all over that outlet. And I said, Maya, no. And I clapped at her and it startled her. And she began to cry. And I remember as a dad going, yeah, that's fine. I would much rather startle my daughter than to see her get electrocuted. The wages of sin is death. You're going to hurt yourself. Stay away. I love you too much. This is a message about love. This is a message about a God that's saying, I want to help you. I want to protect you. I don't want to see you get injured and hurt. So where is the wreckage in your life? Could be in your marriage or in, in your business, in your habits, your thought life, your parenting. There could be wreckage. Today, I'm encouraging you. Come on, let's dig down and see what the roots are. And if it's sin or if it's separation from God, let's allow God to do something about it. He's the remedy. And so... I feel like we've done a good job of identifying, hey, we all fall short, we have sin, perhaps we even have some root things going on. I think we've, we've, we can agree that that might be going on. So I want to jump into this story about a guy named Lazarus. It's in John 11. You can mark that down, read this story in its, in its entirety later. It's amazing. But we're going to be talking about Lazarus, and we're going to use the story of Lazarus to, it's kind of like a modern, we're going to, it's a true story, but we're going to look at it like a parable, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at Lazarus's illness and his death and how it pertains to our sin, which is an illness, and how it leads to eventual death if, if we don't get Jesus in the mix. Is that cool? So that, that's kind of what we're going to do. So this story with Lazarus, he is a, a good friend of Jesus. Some people that are close to him come to the Lord and say, listen, Jesus, your, your bro, Lazarus, is ill. And, and Jesus is like, oh my gosh, I got to get to him. And at some point in time, Jesus gets around to going there, but it's, it's too late. Lazarus has died. And then Jesus performs a miracle that's amazing and incredible. And we'll talk about that. But I want you to write this down as we look at this story. Number one. This is a warning. Sin steals my life. So this root issue that we're talking about, that we've dealt with a little bit, it steals my life. But this is what Jesus says in John eleven four: 4. This illness does not lead to death. Jesus is here today to tell you 
that your sin illness does not lead to death. Not if you'll get the remedy in on the, on the mix. Not if you'll get Jesus in on the mix. But make no mistake, even an illness saps your life, doesn't it? Anybody get the flu this season? Hello. You know, come on. I, I, was, uh, I was in Guatemala one time. Mark Pegley was here last, last week and got to tell jungle stories. So I'm going to tell jungle stories. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I wasn't even in the jungle, but we were, in, we were in Guatemala, and we were doing these kids' camps, and we were, you know, you're eating mostly rice and beans and things like that. Well, one night, the people of the church say, we cooked you all, the, the people around this community cooked you a delicious meal. Like, oh my gosh, what is it? And they said, it's Guatemalan lasagna. Hmm. Well, when you're on a mission trip, whatever they cook for you, you got to eat, okay? So I'm sitting there, and they put this in front of me, and I'm looking at it, and it looks kind of like lasagna, and, uh, <laughs> but I take my first bite, and I'm just like, so heavenly. It is delicious. Like, it's the most amazing dish. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's probably because I've just been eating rice and beans. I don't know, but I mean, it was amazing. I'm like, bring another, and I eat. I bring another. I ate three pieces of this Guatemalan lasagna. And 24 hours later, um, <laughs> bacterial infection in my lower intestine. So uh, I'll spare you the details. Well, I'll tell you one story. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I, I, I was in the back. We were doing this kids' camp thing. I'm in the back. I'm backstage, quarantined kind of, you know. And, uh, and they had this prayer warrior with me at all times, which is just like a 14-year-old kid that was playing on a phone or something. But they, they were praying for me. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and so I'm back there and, uh, and, and they're praying for me. And all of a sudden, like I said, I, I just, it was, I was like, yeah, <laughs> Pastor Rose got to move. You know what I mean? So I get up and I'm about to go run and find the nearest bathroom. But what the funny thing is, is these little kids over there, I had really long hair back then and they all thought I was Jesus. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> they called me, hey, Jesus. you know, so I, so I come rumbling out of here, you know what I mean? I'm running. These kids are like, hey, Lewis. I'm like, Jesus has got a poo. You know what I mean? Like, it was, it was good. Anyway, true story. It's real. So, but listen, listen. If you, got, you can't make this stuff up. I'm only, it's just Guatemala lasagna. Um, but listen, that lasagna was delicious, <laughs> but it wasn't worth it, people. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I was, I was in a Guatemalan hospital, and that's a whole other story. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just, it was not worth it. Sin is going to be real fun for a while. It's going to be a blast. It won't be worth it. It's going to steal your life. It's going to drain you. I'm warning everybody in here, and this is from the Lord, and it's with love. It's the wages of sin is death, I'm promising you. You think it's going to be great. You think it's going to be awesome. You think it's the easy way. It's going to drain you. It's going to hurt you, but I've got great news. If we'll let Jesus in on it, some of us believe that our mistakes determine our destiny. They don't. God's divinity determines our destiny. His plan, his miraculous plan of Jesus, that's the plan. He's the remedy. So we've got to let him in on it, and we've got to stop believing these lies that we believe. What's some of the lies we believe about sin? We believe, well, it's just who I am. Well, that, my, that divorce, my, my family, that, most of my family got divorced. How am I marriage supposed to make it? Well, my, my dad was an addict. How am I supposed to not be an addict? Well, everyone in society is doing it. I'm just going to do it. That's a lie. You don't have to live with that root. Jesus is saying, I can be the remedy. I can come in here and make a difference if you let him. You can have real life and life to the fullest. What's another lie? Another lie we buy into is, man, it's just too much work. I, I, I've done too much. I'm too far gone. I, I'm, I'm beyond saving. Does anyone else in here hate yard work? I, I hate yard work. I hate yard work. I hate it. It's a root. Another root issue is I hate yard work. My wife, we have these two giant garden beds in my, back, in my backyard. And right now, they, they look like a jungle. And I'm not even kidding. It's like there, there are weeds everywhere. And she'll be like, Chris, sometimes I believe that you are ignoring things that must be done. <laughs> 
And I'm like, like what, baby? And she's like, like the jungle in our backyard. And I'm like, well, maybe if I was out there, I could say, oh, get to the chopper. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I mean? I like to try to get her to laugh. And she's just like, there's a jungle. And this is not time for Arnold voice. You know what I mean? Whatever. But here's the thing about my backyard. Like, she's right. She's absolutely right. The worse it gets, the less I want to be involved. The worse, the higher the weeds get. I'm like, I'm just, I don't want to look out there. I don't want to be out there. Sometimes in our sin, we get into it and we believe that our mess is bigger than God's miracle. And I'm trying to tell y'all today, if you let Jesus in on your mess, come on, his miracle trumps our mess every dang time. And we've got to get him in on it. He can do some work in us. So we gotta, we got to look at that lie and say, no way. I'm not buying into it. Isaiah 118, it just drops the hammer on this whole conversation. Come now, let us settle the matter. Let us settle the matter of the sin that is stealing your life away. Your sins are like scarlet. They're going to be white as snow. They're red as crimson. They shall be like wool. He's saying, I love you, and I'm the remedy. Come to me, let me help you. Now, here's another moment in this story. Let's go back to the story of Lazarus. We're going to get into one, little, one more warning for everybody before we get into the celebration. John eleven thirty nine. 39. This is when Jesus shows up on the scene. So he, he comes, and he's ready. Lazarus has died. The illness doesn't lead to death. Well, what do you mean? Well, he died, all of his friends are saying. But he gets there, and he says, in verse 39, roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Point number two, sin stinks. <laughs> okay. Remember, we're talking about the parallel here of the illness that led to death without Jesus. What does this look like? People, sin stinks. And we think we do such a good job of rolling a stone in front of our sin and hiding it. People, you're lying to yourself. And I'm not here to make you paranoid or to scare you. I'm here to tell you the truth. That sin that's in your life, that separation that's keeping you from God, your wife, she knows, your husband, he knows. He may not know or she may not know exactly what's going on, but they can sense it. I'm telling you. Your kids, they, they can feel it in the house, the weight. Your boss will get wind of it at some point in time. Sin has a way of doing that. And the word that says what's done in the dark will be brought to light. So I'm encouraging you today, please don't be ashamed. Please don't be afraid to say this is the root issue. This is it. I'm afraid. I'm ashamed. And all this is happening. I'm going to break through all that to get to Jesus. Because he's the remedy. And let me tell you, let me encourage you. No matter how bad you think you stink, no matter how negative you think you are, I know a story of a kid that stunk to high heaven. His name was the prodigal son. It was a story that Jesus told as a picture of God the Father. And this kid, he stole from his father. He went out doing all the things you could think of that were negative, whoring, drugging, losing everything and all he had. And he walked back with nothing, stinking to high heaven. And the father ran to embrace him and meet him, to cover him with a blessing, to put love in his name and to celebrate the fact that he had come back. So today, I don't care how bad you think you stink. I'm asking you to roll the stone away from the hidden areas in your heart and say, God, please be the remedy because denial does you no good. But when we boldly confess, Jesus can boldly remove the sin, the roots. He can get down in there and do what he does best. So I'm encouraging you today. Let's remember, sin is stealing my life. Give Jesus access. Sin is stinking up the place, even though we think we're hiding it well. Come on, it ain't right. It's not happening. So give Jesus access without shame. Go to him with openness so that we can get to point number three, which is the celebration. Sin submits to Jesus. Death submitted to Jesus when he rolled up in on the scene in verse 43 and 44. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. 
And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus said, come on, unwrap him and let him go. Let him out of this death he's in. He is alive. I know we've done a lot of definitions today. But check out the definition of submit. Submit means to accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another, of another person. Once you allow Jesus access to whatever is stealing your life, whatever is stinking up your world, he has authority. He has a power that is greater than it. But as long as we are trying to deal with it on our own, sin can get us. It can, it can rule us. It can continue to make us slaves to it. But when we say, Jesus, come on, then that's the greater authority. Now, I wanna make this clear. I'm not saying I'm waving a magic wand over everybody and we're going to pray one prayer and then everything is going to be magically completely better. Why? Well, think about it. Didn't Lazarus have a few steps he had to take after Jesus brought him out of the grave? How about a shower and a change of clothes? You know what I mean? (laughs) Please, right? This is the beginning. For some of you, this is the first step. Lazarus had to take a first step. He had to walk out of the grave. So do you. If there's something in your heart, in your life, that you know is causing wreckage, I'm asking you to give Jesus access. Next week, I cannot wait for the message. It's going to be all about how God's got a new diagnosis for you and how do you walk around living healed. Woo, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be good. But it doesn't work without this. And so as we close... Pastor Bill Beck, who many of you guys know around here, he was meeting with me one time, and he told me a story about one of his family members. They had this bush, this this plant in their backyard. I don't know why I'm talking so much about plants today. It's like I hate gardening, yet I'm talking about it constantly. But they had this this plant in in this yard, and they loved it. They manicured it, did all these things. But one day he, like, knelt down, and he noticed that there was this vine up under it. So he uprooted it, and he began to pull the vine out. And to his horror, the more he began to pull the vine out, the more he realized he couldn't tell where the vine began when the bush ended, when the bush began where the vine ended. They had become so intertwined. Some of us, with the sin and the root issues, guys, we can't tell anymore where we begin and where it ends. But if you'll allow the Lord, he'll gently come in and he'll uproot that. And he will gently, day after day, this is sanctification, he will day after day unravel that out of your life so that you can grow into the designed person, the designed plant that he has for his garden. How do I know this? Well, first of all, it's in scripture, but more personally, I know this because I'm just one of your brothers in Christ that's on this journey. Every day, God unraveling a little bit more. Every day, God loving me a little bit more and helping me unravel these things out of my life. So you're not alone. I'm with you. You're not alone. A lot of people in this room are with you. But right now, it's about getting bold, rolling away the stone and saying, God, you're the remedy. I give you access to the depths of me. Search my heart and uproot anything that's not of you because I want to live life to your fullest. Amen. Let's bow our heads. God.